So I want to talk about why males suffer. It has to do with not understanding their gift. Every human came to earth with a gift. And they must discover that gift and refine that gift for them to be fulfilled. I want to ask you a question, and that is, what is in your life's blueprint? This is the most important and crucial period of your lives for what you do now and what you decide now at this age may well determine which way your life shall go. When a male is struggling with what his gift is, it affects the woman. Your gift is your source of significance. Do, do you know what every male in this room wants? He wants to be significant in the eyes of his wife or his family. Do you know what men call that? Respect. The number one motivation of a male is to be respected. To be respected means that you are perceived as being important. Significant. Inspiring habit. Well, gentlemen, I'm telling you how to become respected. Find your gift. And whenever a building is constructed, you usually have an architect who draws a blueprint. And that blueprint serves as the pattern, as the guide, as the model for those who are to build the building. And a building is not well erected without a good, sound, and solid blueprint. Now each of you is in the process of building the structure of your lives. And the question is whether you have a proper, a solid, and a sound blueprint. Because your gift makes the women in your life have meaning. It gives them meaning. It gives you meaning, but it gives them meaning also. And so your gift is the source of your significance. What made Michael Jordan significant? It wasn't what school he went to or you know who his parents are. It was his gift, a powerful gift. When a human finds their gift, they will make it anywhere. Are you listening to me? You cannot fire a gift. This is important for men. Because you see, when a man loses his job, he loses his head. Why? He confuses the job with his gift. He confuses the job with his work. You don't go to work. You go to a job. And the job might be there or might not be there. You need to ask God, what is my gift? And I want to suggest some of the things that should be in your life's blueprint. Number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your own worth, and your own somebodiness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you are nobody. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth. And always feel that your life has ultimate significance. Now that means that you should not be ashamed of your color. You know, it's very unfortunate that in so many instances, our society has placed a stigma on color. Ashamed of themselves? Don't be ashamed of your color. Don't be ashamed of your biological features. I throw away negative thoughts. Somehow you must be able to say in your own lives and really believe it, I am beautiful. Write this down, please. The key to success is, first of all, not to seek success. The key to success is to become a person of value. That's how you become successful in the human terms. The more valuable you make yourself, the more successful you become in life. 
So stop trying to be successful and try to become valuable. Why? Money is attracted to value. If you want plenty of money, don't go after money. Make yourself valuable. Money will find you. Money is attracted to value. The more value you give yourself to the world, the more the world will pay for you. Do you know that the greatest entrepreneurs in history, like Stephen Jobs or Bill Gates, who created software, they created them at home. In his garage, the guy built the first desktop in his garage. What are you doing with your garage? Well, I'm waiting for opportunity. The opportunity is in your body. Think, men. Now, in your life's blueprint, be sure that you have that a principle of somebody. Secondly, in your life's blueprint, you must have as a basic principle the determination to achieve excellence in your various fields of endeavor. You're going to be deciding as the days and the years unfold what you will do in life, what your life's work will be. Once you discover what it will be set out to do it and to do it well. You know, God never gave Adam a table, never gave Adam a chair, never gave Adam a house, even ain't given clothes. Why? God hid the tables in the trees. I wonder what's hidden around you, right in your yard. And if you ain't married yet, man, listen carefully. If you have a woman in your life, you get married, if your wife knows that you can never get fired, she'll always be secure. How do you become immune to firing? Find something they can't fire. You were born a male, but you must become a man. Being male or female is a biological reality. You didn't choose that. But whether you become a woman or a man is a choice. What makes a male a man? What actually makes him a man? And why is manhood important to a woman? You know, when men don't know who they are, women are in trouble. The key to a man's manhood is his work. Man's work defines him. And I say to you, my young friends, that doors are opening to each of you. Doors of opportunity are opening to each of you that were not open to your mothers and to your fathers. And the great challenge facing you is to be ready to enter these doors as they open. Let me say something about work. If a man is not happy with his work, he won't be happy with his home. Work is more important to a man than a woman. If a man isn't working, he's disoriented. He becomes disillusioned. He becomes confused. God gave man work before he gave him woman. Work shows up in the Bible in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. Woman shows up in Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. God didn't make woman until man had work. So the most important thing that a man really needs is not woman. It's work. A woman can never make you a man. Work makes you a man. What is work? The first commandment God gave man was work. The word work means to become. I thought it meant to do something. But the word that God uses is another word that we don't think about. It means to become. The word also means to manifest yourself. The word work is also defined in Hebrew as to reveal yourself. When God took the man, put him in the garden, God told the man, reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. That's work. Another way to put it, work means to fulfill your assignment. Let me see what's on the inside of you. Show the world what I hid in you. Work means to become yourself. In other words, work means to perform your function. When a bird is flying, God calls that work. When a fish is swimming, God calls that work. When a seed is becoming a tree, God calls that work. In other words, when you are working, you are at the greatest level of fulfillment. Work. And move so you can grow. So you can get on with your life.
Ralph Waldo Emerson, the great essayist, said in a lecture back in 1871 that if a man can write a better book or preach a better sermon or make a better mousetrap than his neighbor, even if he builds his house in the woods, the world will make a beaten path to his door. And so I would urge you to study hard, to burn the midnight oil. I would say to you, don't drop out of school. And I understand all of the sociological reasons why we often drop out of school. But I urge you, in spite of your economic plight, in spite of the situation that you are forced to live so often, with intolerable conditions, stay in school. And when you discover what you're going to be in life, set out to do it as if God Almighty called you at this particular moment in history to do it. God made the man, the male. Then God gave him work. Then God said, it's not good for this man to be alone. I will make him a help suitable to help him. To help him with what? Work. Women were created to work, but they were created to work with the work of the man. So if a woman was created for the purpose of working, but her work is to work with the work of the man and the man can't find his work then when the woman shows up in his life you got two problems she comes to help him do nothing the reason why a lot of women are working on their own and on doing their own stuff is because in many cases they cannot find the man who knows his project do you know what a woman really wants she wants to help her man succeed she does. But most of the time, the man don't know what he want to do. Or ain't doing nothing. Or ain't got no interest in doing anything. Haven't discovered anything. So the woman is frustrated. And she got all this weapons and all this anointing, all this intelligence, all this wisdom, all the stuff she brings. And she meets this person who don't know what they do. And just don't set out to do a good job. Don't set out to be just a good doctor, a good lawyer, a good school teacher, a good preacher, a good barber, a beautician, a good skilled laborer. Or if you set out to do that, you have already flunked your matriculation exam for entrance into the University of Integration. Set out to do a good job and do that job so well that the living, the dead, or the unborn couldn't do it any better. Falls your lot to be a street sweeper. Sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures. Sweep streets like Beethoven composed music. Sweep streets like Leontine Price sings before the Metropolitan Opera. Sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth We'll have to pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who swept his job well. You know, nothing to me is more beautiful than watching a man who found his work have a woman in his life helping him do it. It's the most beautiful picture. The male was commanded to work, which meant that he was commanded to become himself. Every human was created for and with a gift of value. Every one of you, male and female, was created by God with a gift of value. And that is where you're supposed to lead in that area of gifting. And your fulfillment is in that gift. Therefore, the male was given a gift. And you can never lose the gift. You know, the Bible says the call of God is without recall. In other words, once God gave you something to do, he never takes it back. Even if you misuse it. If you use your gift of music to sing garbage, God allows you to keep the gift. Here's my point. Whatever gift God buried in you to come to the planet to manifest, you still have that gift now. Even if you never used it before. You didn't come to the earth with a job. 
or with a career. That's why they could fire you from your job, take it from you, or they can cancel your career by shutting down the company or making you redundant. But they cannot take your gift. And the Bible never says your education or your job shall make room for you in the world. If you can't be a pine on the top of the hill, be a scrub in the valley. But be the best little scrub on the side of the rill. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. For it isn't by size that you win or you fail. Be the best of whatever you are. Human nature cannot be cataloged. New and blazing stars of inspiration from crippling circumstances, from a poverty-stricken area. Yes, you should know this because it's in your own city. There came a George Washington Carver to carve for himself an imperishable niche in the annals of science. The powerful gift, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 16. It says what? A man's gift makes room for him and will bring him before great men and kings. Never confuse what you study in school with your gift. They are not the same thing most of the time. Sometimes when you, when you finally come to God, you realize you studied the wrong degree. Because he shows you your gift and your gift was not what you studied. So you wasted four years and $50,000. That means once you come back to your purpose, you realize my degree was a waste of time. Because it's your gift that makes room for you, not your education. Finally in your life's blueprint must be a commitment to the eternal principles of beauty, love, and justice. Don't allow anybody to pull you so low as to make you hate them. Don't allow anybody to cause you to lose your self-respect to the point that you do not struggle for justice, however young you are. You have a responsibility to seek to make your nation a better nation in which to live. You have a responsibility to seek to make life better for everybody. And so you must be involved in the struggle for freedom and justice. I call these the key principles of gift. Whatever God calls for, he provides for. God will never demand from you what he didn't put in you. Whatever God demands, he supplies. Whatever God expects, he injects. Whatever God assigns, he designs. Whatever God calls out, he puts in. These are important truth principles. Birds were made to fly. So God built flight into birds. Birds never attend flight school. Fish were made to swim. So you never find a fish attending a swimming lesson. The swim is built into the fish. Seeds become trees, but you never find a seed going to a convention to learn how to grow trees. It's built in. Here's the principle. Whatever God created you to become is not outside of you. It's inside of you. You can take a seed and plant it in a bad economy and it still becomes a tree. Do you care what I'm talking about? No, you don't. You sure you get it? See, this. once you realize that your future is not around you or ahead of you, then you become peaceful because God put your future where you can't miss it. And we go looking for it everywhere except where it is. You need originality. How original are you in what you're doing? Skin may differ, but affection dwells in black and white the same. Fleecy locks and black complexion cannot forfeit nature's claim. If I were so tall as to reach the pole or to grasp the ocean at a span, I must be measured by my soul. The mind is the standard of the man. The place you go should tap into your gift, not just give you a salary. Are you growing? Are you, are you using your talents where you are? If I open a shoe store in the Bahamas, I'll become successful, you know. I know how to become valuable. I might decide I'm only sh selling shoes for nurses. Every nurse in Bahamas will come right to my store. They'll bypass your store, come to my wife. I became unique. I became special. 
If you sell everything, you can go broke. Matter of fact, the last one is important. Specialization. If you're going to become successful, your, your gift makes you... Yeah, listen, you ever seen a bird trying to moo like a cow? No. Birds stay with being birds. They stay in their gift. Even though the bird is trapped in the cage, it still could fly. The cage doesn't take away the gift. It just limits it. I don't care where you're working right now. They might let you go next month. It really doesn't matter anymore after the session. They can never take away your flight. Now in this struggle for freedom and justice, there are many constructive things that we all can do and that we all must do. And we must not give ourselves to those things which will not solve our problem. You've heard the word non-violent and you've heard the word violent. I happen to believe in non-violence. We've struggled with this method with young people and adults alike. But I believe as we struggle with these problems, we've got to struggle with them with a method that can be militant, but at the same time does not destroy life or property. And so our slogan must not be burn, baby, burn. It must be build, baby, build. Yes, our slogan must be learn, baby, learn, so that we can earn, baby, earn. And with a powerful commitment, I believe that we can transform dark yesterdays of injustice and the bright tomorrows of justice and humanity. You know, sometimes the Lord will actually break up the cage because you don't want to leave. Now, I'm not saying the jobs are bad. Because sometimes the job is the place you go so you can develop your gift until it's time to fly. And for heaven's sake, don't fly too soon. But the point I want you to get is know your gift. So in case they move the cage or put you out the cage, instead of getting depressed and falling on the ground, you fly higher. That's what a male needs. A male needs to give security to his woman. If anything happens, baby, I'm still going to make it good. Why? What I got, baby. What you married is in me, baby. You didn't marry what I do. You marry who I am. Say amen, somebody. You marry the gift that's in your baby boy. I'm going to empower me. Let us keep going toward the goal of selfhood, toward the realization of the dream of brotherhood, toward the realization of the dream of understanding goodwill. Let nobody stop us. You better start collecting more ideas. Your gift may be fishing. And they're trying to make you an IT specialist. If you know you have a gift, and everyone does, but once you find it, you also become very protective of being manipulated. People don't threaten you if you have a gift anymore. They can't threaten you. you know, I'll fire you. Look, you can't fire me. You are privileged to have me working at this place at this time to use my special gift in your behalf to improve you. So behave yourself and pay me a little bit more money. This is very important what I'm saying now. See, your gift protects you from manipulation. Here's what I mean by that. Inspiring habits. When you are aware of your gift, then you know that people don't love you because of you. What they like is what you got. You were born with the seed of greatness and your seed is your gift. Your gift is your leadership. You were born to lead in that area of gifting that you have and you must discover your gift which becomes your assignment in life and that's what the woman comes to help you with. Life for me ain't been no crystal stat. It's had tax in it. Boards torn up places with no carpet on the floor. Bare. But all the time I've been a climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So don't you stop now. I'm growing. Don't you sit down on the steps cause you find this kind of hard. But I'm still going. I still climb. Still climb. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 6. Sow your seed in the morning and at evening let not your hands be idle because you know not which one will prosper or succeed whether this one or that or both 
will do equally well. That verse saved my life as a teenager and still is doing it today. I've seen people violate this verse and go broke and destroy their families. Let me interpret that verse for you. Sow your seed in the morning, that means go to work on your job. And in the evening, don't let your hands be out. That means find something to do after you get off from work, start another job. Do your own little thing. He says, because you don't know which one will succeed. God doesn't want you to have two jobs. What he wants you to have is one job and your work. That means you shouldn't leave your job before you are secure in your work. He said, do both. Bahamas Faith Ministries was built while both of us were still working. Me and Pastor Richard, Pastor Henry, we were all working in different places. We didn't come into this ministry full time until it was already able to handle everything. You start work after you leave your job. And life for me ain't been no crystal stair. Well, life for none of us has been a crystal stair. But we must keep moving. We must keep going. If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. We're not perfect. If you can't walk, crawl. But by all means, keep moving. I'm talking to you, man. See, your job tells you how much you should make. Your work tells you make how much you want. See, if you let your job become your only supply, you're in trouble. Because they ever take that from you, you collapse. Solomon says, go in the morning, plant your seed. And in the evening, keep working. You don't know which one will prosper you, he says, or even both. Hey man, you got a wife and kids. You can't experiment with an idea and walk away from a job that could take care of your rent and your stuff. Use the wisdom of the Bible, the word of God says you do both until one of them outgrows the other. You can experiment with your family. You going to work tomorrow or you going to do a job? You become successful when you refine your gift in the name of Jesus.